Welcome to this quick intro of usage-based access in TwinGate, which we also call AutoLock. Let's talk about one of the most difficult parts of moving to a zero trust paradigm, which is, well, how do you make sure that only users with legitimate access can access endpoints, but that the same users end up not being able to access anything else that they don't need without building a complex model of permissions and without being at times a little bit overzealous and cutting off access to people that legitimately need access to things. So instead of collecting a lot of logs and sifting through the activities across all of users, connecting to all of your endpoints, one thing you can do now in TwinGate is you can configure any resource. Let's open one here and set an auto lock on the resource. So the auto lock itself is available at two levels. It's available for individual groups but it's also available for the resource itself and therefore is applicable to all groups that have access to said resource. The way auto lock works is relatively simple. If you set an auto lock to say 60 days, what Twinkit is going to do across all users with legitimate access to this resource is look at the last time those users have accessed this IP address in this case. If any of the users in the groups under access have not accessed this resource in the past 60 days, then they will be simply locked out of the resource. So what happens on day 61 for my user that has not accessed this particular IP address for 60 straight days is that I will get locked out of it and I will get a message that tells me so. Right, And the message is that I'm locked out due to inactivity. So as an end user, I know which resource created the lockout and I can actually send the information on my user, the network, what is the block reason, which is obviously inactivity here on my platform and all of the information that an admin would require to unlock my access to this resource. Now this from the admin side is very easy to do. Once you know which user has been locked out, you can simply go to the user in question. And for that user, under the list of resources, you will be able to simply click on unlock resource and their access to the resource will be restored. So think of this feature as a passive feature that is going to run and look for access from users and prune effectively all of the access edges that are not necessary yet expose you to additional risk. Uh, I mentioned this before, but the subtlety here is that you can set the auto lock on the resource, but you could also apply a different auto lock, a shorter auto lock, for instance, for specific groups in this case, for contractors who are not part of our organization, it might make sense to have a little bit more of a strict and shorter auto lock policy the auto lock itself can be set using the API. Um, in the interface, you can set it to 30, 60, 90 days. With the API, you can be more granular than that. The final piece of the puzzle here is the ability to download summaries. Those summaries contain, uh, for instance, for a single resource, all of the access across all users and whether those users are locked or unlocked along with some other interesting metadata, what time they were locked out if they're locked, uh, and a little bit more. There's also a group level summary that will give you a little bit of information as to what the auto lock is set, but also if there's an expiration time, although the expiration here has nothing to do with auto lock itself. You can extract similar reports directly from, the, from a single user. So if you wanted to see the list of all resources a user has access to, what resources they're locked out of and not locked out of, you can download the summary from here as well. Finally, the concept of auto lock applies to all resources, not just resources that are based on single IPs. You could do the same thing with resources that are based on side ranges that contain meta characters or that are just fully qualified domain names. And that concludes our introduction to AutoLock in TwinGates. Hopefully this makes your journey towards a zero trust paradigm much faster and easier.